arise awake stop not until the goal is reached by swami vivekananda okay now there will be many of you who have actually have a lot of difficulty understanding this concept of relations and functions right because you all have uh, like difficulty in distinguishing that how a relation is different from a function right now so today to understand this concept we are going to discuss in detail so that after this i hope that this concept will be clear and will become easy to understand okay so i am michael dapta and you all are watching the mathematics of har sawal to the solve okay so let's begin now in this particular chapter in the beginning we first have to understand three particular terms okay what are those the first is the cartesian product then the next is relation and the third thing is a function okay now basically this entire chapter revolves around these three things okay and to understand these we have to specifically understand their basic meaning and how we uh, relate how we represent them in general and based on that how we basically are uh, going to work on our problems right so first we are going to begin with cartesian product okay now to explain this let me first start with an example okay now but before uh, discussing this particular topic i hope you all are aware of this particular term that is ordered pair okay now what is the ordered pair now ordered pair basically means that if we write two elements together in such a way like suppose a comma b okay Now, ordered pair. Pair. We all are clear about the pair. Basically, means it's there are two things there, right? That's why we are calling this pair. And ordered because if A is in the first place and B is in the second place, then then there is a particular meaning of that, right? Like A comma B and B comma A, they are not the same thing. So there is a particular matter. So A should be in the first place. B should be in the second place. They have like something like the coordinate geometry, like you all have done earlier in class nine and ten. So two comma one and one comma two, these two coordinates are not the same, right? They have some special meaning of in which they are appearing. So that's why here order is important. That is why we are calling it as an ordered pair. Okay. Now see, suppose for example, if I tell you all that I'm taking two sets, right? Suppose set A where the elements are one, two, three, and let me take another set B. Where we have the elements as four comma five, for example. Okay. Now, if I do the Cartesian product of these two sets, now this is the notation for Cartesian product, so we call it as a cross b, or basically this is the Cartesian product of a and b. Then see how we are getting it. Okay. So Cartesian essentially we are doing the Cartesian product of two elements. Okay. Therefore, we are basically going to get ordered pairs, right? And in which the first element will come from the first set, and the second element will come from the second set, right? See how we are. So, if we take the first element of A, and if we keep pairing with the elements of B, then we get pairs like this. The first will be one comma four. The next will be one comma five. Now, similarly, with the second element, we can pair the elements of B, so we'll be getting two comma four. Two comma five, and then next we can have three comma four and three comma five. Okay, so now here in the Cartesian product, actually what we are getting, we are getting ordered pairs. Now in this particular set, each ordered pair is basically one element of this set. So basically, how many elements we have here? We have six elements. Okay, and each of these ordered pairs are basically Each of the elements, okay, and each element is an ordered pair which consists of two numbers, where the first element comes from the first set and the second element comes from the second set. Okay, so this is what Cartesian product is all about. Okay, now one more thing keep in mind. Now before doing the Cartesian product, also we can say that how many elements we are going to have in the Cartesian product. See how, like suppose if you have three elements in the first set and if you have two elements in the second. Just simply multiply those numbers. So three into two, how much we get? Six. So that means the Cartesian product will have six elements. Okay, and you see we have six elements. Okay, so that is what Cartesian product is all about. 
Now similarly, now since we have only done the product of two sets, that is why we are getting phase. But similarly, if we do product of three sets, in that case, we'll be getting a uh, we'll get a combination of three elements each. In those cases, we'll be getting order triplets. Okay, like that we'll keep on getting. Okay, so that is what partition product is all about. Okay, now next we'll talk about relation. Okay. Now first we have to understand that what basically a relation is all about. Okay, now first of all understand one thing that relation is basically a part of partition. Okay, so partition product is the whole thing and relation is a part of it. Okay, so relation is basically, relation is also a set. So it's basically the uh, collection or you can say the set of those ordered pairs which will follow a particular relation. Relation is they will follow a particular definition for the way it is defined. Okay, so let me show you all with an example so that you all can understand it in a better way. Okay, so I'm suppose for example here also I'm taking an example of two sets. Suppose let me set a set B. Okay, where suppose the elements are let's say uh, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and let's take a set Q where we have the elements as 4, 9, and 6. Okay, so these are the two sets. Okay, now first of all, if you write the partition product, then how much we get? We get something like this, it will be 1, 4, then 1, 9. Now let's see, so 3 elements, 3 elements, so that means before doing the partition product, we can have an idea of the elements. The product is going to have so it's 3 cross 3 to 3, so it will be 9. So that means we are supposed to get 9 elements in the product, right? So let's see then. So this will be the third element. So basically, I'm writing the elements of partition product so that will be like easier for all of you to understand the relation when we are going to define the relation. Then we are a little bit clear to all of you that the relation is actually a part of partition. So see, we have nine elements here, right? Now, let me define a relation in this way that we are talking about such ordered pairs x, y, where x belongs to the set P, which is the first set, and y belongs to the set U, which is the second set, right? And the relation and the definition is defined in such a way that y is equal to x squared, okay? Now see the definition that we have defined the relation in. So they are talking about such ordered pairs in which the first element will come from the first set that is P, the second element is coming from the second set Q, and the second element should be a square of the first element. Okay. So now you if you observe the Cartesian product, now you see which are the ordered pairs in which the second element is a square of the first. Okay, so see in which. So first, if we observe, then 2, 4 is an ordered pair in which the second one is a square of the first element, right? So 2, 4 will be a part of the relation. Any other such pair? Yes, we have 3, 9. So only for these two pairs, this definition is valid. So that means in relation, only these two ordered pairs will be present because for the rest of them, you can see this definition is not valid and they are not following this particular definition. So, only these two are following, so only they will be a part of the relation. So, those ordered pairs which will follow this will be a part of the relation, and those which will not follow it, they will be not a part of the relation. As simple as that. Okay, now one more thing relation may be expressed or may be written in three forms. What are those? Now you see, if I write it this way, now this is basically the set builder form. Okay, so this is the set builder form. And if you directly write the pairs, so this is called the roster form. This is the roster form. Okay, now there is another form by which we can show it, and that is the basic, and that basically is called the arrow diagram. Okay, by arrow diagram also we may be using the relation here. So let's see the arrow diagram. Like suppose if we draw in this way, so basically we have drawn two oval type of structures in 2D. Right? 
Let me denote the first one as set P and the second one as set Q. Okay, now just write the elements of P here, but we have it's 1, 2, 3. And then write the elements of Q here, that is 4, 9, and 16, right? Now, what do you all do? Now, since the relation is between P and Q, so you just see, see that where is the first element and where is the second element. Okay, so basically treat the relation as a machine in which we are giving an input and we are getting a corresponding output for that, right, for the given definition. Okay, now see the first pair, so 2 is the input and 4 is the output, so it will go from 2 to 4. So the arrow will go in the direction from input to output. Okay, similarly for the second one is going from 3 to 9 as 9 is the output. So this is basically the arrow diagram for the given relation. Okay, now one more thing I would like to mention here, like for example for this one, okay, we can call that 4 is the image of 2 and at the same time we can also say that 2 is the pre-image of 4. Okay, be aware of this particular term image and pre-image. So the output is basically called the image of the input and the input is basically called the pre-image of the output. Okay. So I think now you all are getting a little bit idea that how we work basically with the relation. Okay. I would like to, I, I would like all of you to make a note of this particular part which might be useful in some problems. I see. First of all, for example, like if the cardinal number of a set A is P, for example, on this way, and a cardinal number of another set B is Q. So basically, if set A have P elements and set B have Q elements, then you can say that the cardinal number of A cross B will be P into Q. This we have already discussed a little bit earlier. So basically, the product of the cardinal numbers of the two sets is basically the number of elements in the partition product. Now there is one more thing that you should we all should know is that the number of relations, the total number of relations that will be applicable on A and B is going to be 2 to the power P Q. Okay. So if anyone asks you like how many relations are possible on A and B involving A and B. Then you can use this form to tell that yes, there are 2 to the power P2. Okay, so you substitute the values and you can get the total number of relations in this case. Oh, yes, so you all can make a note of this as well. So a relation from A to B is said to be a function if every element of A has one and only one image in the set B. Okay, so that means only those relations we are going to call them as functions if for each and every element of the set A we have only so basically for every element we have to there have to be an image and not only that there needs to be an image there needs to be only one image okay so let us see an example I think after that will be more clear to us okay so suppose let me define a function in such a way that x, y, we are considering those order pairs x, y such that x belongs to A and y belongs to B. Okay. And they have defined that y is equal to x. Okay. So this is basically the function. Okay. Now let, us, let me take two sets. Suppose set A where we have minus 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And let us take a set B where we have the elements as 1, 4, 9, 16. Okay, so suppose in this way we are going to define it. Now, the thing is that uh, if we draw the arrow diagram for this particular function, let's see what we are getting. Okay, see. So suppose this is my set A, where we have the elements as minus 1, 1, 2, 3. And here we have the set B where the elements are 1, 4, 9, and 16. Okay, so let's apply the definition of the functions. It's, uh, they are saying that the second one is a square of the first. 
So suppose if the input is minus 1, then the square is what? 1. So that means this is the arrow will go from minus 1 to 1, right? Now for the second input, it's 1. So what is the square of 1? 1, right? So that means from 1 also it will go to the 1, right? And now the next input is 2. So the square of 2 is 4. So you have the arrow something like this. And the square of 3 is 9. So the arrow will go something like this. Now if we observe the arrow diagram closely, we get to see that for each and every element of the first set, we do have an image. Right, so that means we are satisfying the condition to be a function. Not only that, if you see each and every element have only one image, isn't it? Like minus one have only one image, one have only one image, two have only one image, and also three only got a single image. Okay, so that means we are satisfying the conditions to be a function. Now, if you think that, but in, if you can see here that minus one and one, they both have the same image. Okay. So you might think that how is that possible? See, according to the definition here, obviously the square of minus 1, they both are 1. But according to the definition of function, they never told that we can't have a single image for two functions, right? They told that for a, for a particular element, we need to have only one image. And if you, you can see that for each of these elements, we have only one image, okay? But they never told that a particular image can have two three images. They never told that. So that is okay. We can consider that. Okay, one more thing is there. If you see here that the second set, we got an extra element. So this element don't have a three image. Again, coming back to the same thing. They told each element of the first set should have an image. They never told that every image should have a three image. They never told that. So even though even if we have such an element, we don't have a three image. So it's fine. So it's satisfying the conditions to be a function, so it's a function. So remember two things here. Yeah? You can make a note of it that many to one is possible in a function. That means like two elements may have a single image or more than two elements might have a single image. So many to one is possible, no problem in that. But one to many is not possible. Okay, why? Because whenever we will have one too many, that means one particular element will have more than one image. And that they have strictly told that every element should have only one image. So that means one element can't have more than one image. So that's why one too many case will not be possible. Okay, so I hope now function is a little bit clear, relation is a little bit clear, and given the direction to that is a little bit clear. I hope this will help you all, okay? And uh, with the help of this concept, I think you all will be able to work out with the problems with the relations and functions, okay? Those who are new to the channel, subscribe and also hit the bell icon. You can also like the video if you think that this is useful to you. So we'll continue in the next video with some new concept, okay? Okay then, that much for today. So y'all are watching Gadit Patek's Abhal Sawal Vokasun.